lights, cameras, action. No action. What to do now? Hello, good morning. Well, that's what happens when everybody becomes photographers nowadays. Everybody's got a mobile phone. Everybody's got a mobile phone with a camera. You know, it's, 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 that's, that's what photography does to us. But thankfully, I'm no longer alone. But there was a time when I aspired to be inspired by the masters and become a master myself. That's late Ashok Mehta, sir, with me when I was in college. They said I'm a dreamer. And I was the lonely one, looking like a fool, chasing an elusive dream. When my peers were busy finding the best corporate job the world had to offer, all I did was dream. Dream of living my fantasies through pictures. And today, I take pictures and people presented as art at airports and beyond. Art lovers throng my exhibitions and encourage me to continue doing more and more exhibitions across the world. Not only me, my pictures travel the world to Davos and beyond as well. Big thank you to all my clients who pay for it all. Transport me to exotic places, block my dates to have dates with beautiful women, or take me amongst the stars. And to top it all, make me feel like a champion by inviting me to give fundas to the fundus. All big dreams begin small. With this small camera, my photography started way back in school. In reality, when all of us are photographers today with mobile phones and cameras in them, what do photographers like me do? Bring home wonderful memories of a holiday? I was in Burma a couple of weeks ago. This is one picture I shot with a mobile phone. Frame moods of people telling tales of joy and melancholy. Capture the beauty and the vastness of nature. Is that it? Is photography just that? For me, photography is P for perception, H for how, O for observation, T for themes and types, O for opportunities, G for gears and gadgets, R for real and common picture taking mistakes, A for analysis. P for presentation, H for handling the business of photography, and Y for yourself, defining and designing one's own style. So what is perception? Put on your thinking cap, turn the negatives into positives. It is important, hence, to know where to stand. It's marked here, right here, where to stand so that the light falls right on you, the cameras can focus you, you get yourself in the limelight. <laughs> so when an army of young Ladakhis came chasing me, all I did was surrender. And photography won. It doesn't matter what we shoot. What matters is how we shoot it. The best way I thought to describe it was the best buses of Mumbai. Sometimes uh, it's very difficult to arrange things. So instead of arranging things, I prefer to arrange myself instead. So what I do is I shoot a subject and then go, go on top of it and shoot it all the other way around. Well, if you see closely, that is the ambassador car which had taken me to this place called Dhank Nabodra in Gujarat. All I did was I climbed 50 meters through this pipe or whatever that pole was, and went all the way on top. So if you co look closely, maybe you might find even a shadow of mine out there. And shot it the other way around. Simple. Whatever we put in a picture is whatever what it does to us. How? How does all this happen? Lines, shapes. You see beautifully this shape complementing this one, right? Tones, black and white, color, warm, color, cool tones, textures, rhythm. Rhythm is basically a repetition of the same thing over and over and over again, like a march pass, like we do. You know, it's something on those lines. Another example of rhythm in concentric circles. If you have been to Bombay or if you have seen the Taj Mahal Hotel, the dome that was burning during the 2611, this is the inside of that. So that's what it looks like, if you haven't seen it very closely. Variety, there is so much happening in the picture, but you are still drawn into the subject of interest that is the model out there. Emphasis. A few years ago, sometimes people are just too kind to me, like you have been. They invite me and make me feel very special. They make me, like when I was in, when I was in Israel a few years ago, I was made the state guest and I was taken there. Uh, uh, and, and I was taken around the country to uh, just uh, enjoy my travel and uh, take pictures. And we Indians, uh, when we travel abroad, we find it very, very difficult. Because we are so used to people, especially when I'm in Bombay you know, or Mumbai, uh, I have the local trains out there which is loaded with people, the traffic and so on and so forth. So when I land up in a place like Jerusalem, where I do not find a single human being in such a beautiful location, I don't know what to shoot. So all I did, I squatted there because I knew something was exciting here. 
and I had an entourage of bodyguards accompanying me and all of that. And they were wondering what was I doing sitting just there. I knew something would happen. And something did. After almost half an hour of 15-20 minutes of sitting there, this kid came in a red shirt and made the picture for me. Balance imbalance. This is something which I noticed being in a Bombayite or a Mumbaiite is the paradox or the contradiction or the juxtaposition that coexists. The rich and the poor, the slums and the skyscrapers. This is something similar I found on that trip of Israel that I did. So this was old world charm coexisting with the modern architecture. So this is how I thought of depicting him. So if you can bring about a balance in the imbalance, this is how it will turn out to be. Placement in space. Well, sometimes a, a, a bomb blast okay, can also look as beautiful. This is Jer uh, this Palestine and uh, Israel and we have heard about the Gaza Strip and stuff like that. So this is basically a bomb blast and this is what it looks like. So if you place it, place your subject interestingly, it can make interesting uh, results. Unity in fragmentation. Unity in fragmentation simply means that when you have so many things happening around you and your picture is united to come to one place, okay, in some way, that is what is unity and fragmentation. It so happened that when 2611 was happening, uh, I was sitting in my room reading a book. I had no clue that it had started. I got a call from London and I was told that, Ritam, what are you up to? I said, uh, I'm reading a book. And uh, do you know what is happening in your city right now? Uh, I said, well, not really. Seems like there's a terrorist attack. And uh, your, your, your shoot, which was scheduled for Sunday at the Taj Mahal Hotel, is getting cancelled. Are you free to go there today, right now? I said, wonderful. That was a call from Getty London. Okay? So uh, Getty Images from London called me up and said that, can I go and shoot the 2611? I just jumped out of my house and there were taxi wallahs standing on, on the roadside and they were all my friends. I said, Marne ke liye kon kon hai? <laughs> Okay, so that's how I went about shooting 2611. After I shot 2611 and because of Getty, my pictures got published all over the world from like New York Times, Washington Post, London Observer, Stern Magazine, I'm, you know, and you name it, it was there. Uh, because of the news value of the pictures. Uh, so I was initially very happy that I, my pictures were world news. But after a few days, I felt very bad because Mumbai, the city that made me, how did I present her to the world? So once that happened, I thought, how can I bring back the joy of the city? So I went around meeting people at the BMCs, trying to figure out if I could do something to beautify the city in my own little way by holding exhibitions with the kids from the BMC schools and so on and so forth. The red tabism was too much for me to handle. So one day somebody suggested, why don't you do a series of pictures of Mumbai and personify Mumbai? So that's how my exhibition, Mumbai, the city that talks to me, came into existence. While doing that, I was shooting the Dahi Handi once at the worldly Naka. Okay? I was there till 10, 30, 11 in the night waiting for the Handi to break. Nobody could break it, man. I got so tired and frustrated standing in the same spot for so long, all I did, I picked up the camera and moved it around like this. And this is what happened. Okay? And when it looks arty, you can come and praise and say, wow, I'm teaching you something. Jackie Shroff, we do. Agudada has been a very, very dear friend and has been very, very supportive of me for years, you know. I mean, whenever I call him up, I feel ex very excited because he's a wonderful human being. So one day I just called him up and I said, that I'm coming to your set to shoot some pictures. So I landed up there and this is what I did. He's definitely in the center of interest. Lines of direction. If you see closely, this line and this line draws you to the subject of interest out here. That is what it is all about. Rules of thought. When you break up an image into three equal halves, where it joins, here, 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 here. If you place your name in subject of interest, it looks more exciting. One example, that's the gateway of India. The other example, S-curve. Women look very beautiful. Now do I need to say more? So anything that is graceful is, is, is if, you, if you put an S-curve in your composition, it is bound to make it look beautiful and graceful. Like, like everybody knows, mostly in engineering colleges, where we don't have too many women, we know how to value that much so much more. <laughs> right? So it all boils down to the O of photography, that is observation. Every ordinary place can be interesting if you know what to see and how to see it. One day I told my maid, hello, uh, please clean it. She didn't bother. 
So I took the hard pick and I turned it around. So I realized even when in deep shit, you can create art. <laughs> I have been lucky to travel with a lot of greats, like uh, one of them being Asta Debu, uh, he is a stalwart in the world of dance. And uh, I traveled with him across the world and I traveled with him to Mexico as well, where, we, uh, where I did one of my calendars with him. And uh, this is where I was shooting with him. And he's a, phot uh, he's a dancer who has been photographed by several people over the years. But talking about observation, nobody bothered to shoot his hairstyle. <laughs> he's been having this hairstyle for over 25 odd years. And there have been several photographers who have photographed him already. But nobody bothered to do this. I was a lucky one again to observe. Themes and types. That's the T of photography. World full of opportunities. If you love expressions and emotions of people, people photography is what excites you. That's what you could explore. Documentary photography, event photography, fashion and glamour photography, conceptual and art photography, beauty photography, calendar photography, that's Sonakshi Sina before Dabang, or while she was shooting for Dabang, children photography, portrait photography, just for your kind of information. That's Birumba. Okay, in a different avatar altogether. Product photography, automobile photography, Wildlife photography, natural landscape photography, interior architecture photography, industrial photography, food photography, photojournalism, travel photography. Do I need to say opportunities are immense and more and more and more? I have done it all. I'm sure you guys can do much more than I could have ever done. Photographer is nothing but a hunter in the woods in search of his prey. Kannada wale bahut milte hain Punjab mein. So when I went to shoot for Incredible India once, Okay, and one of the pictures in the advertising section that you saw, that is when I discovered such kind of funny things. So you have to look beyond your commission brief and projects. And that is when you start enjoying what you are doing. So this happens to be during that time. Inculcating a strong sense of judgment, being at the right place at the right moment, and taking the right jump is all that counts to make a picture worth its while. Gears and gadgets. Well, I, I do not understand much, so I do not bother much either. It is never the camera because it's the eye behind the camera that makes the picture, according to me. Well, even that picture was shot with this phone. So all the last five, six pictures that you saw were shot with just my phone. So you do not need mega gadgets to make pictures happen. If you have the eye and if you have the inclination to study, observe, you will get pictures that you desire. Yes, equipment is required, but not always. So when we complain, we do not have the right equipment, we do not have the resources or the money to buy those equipment, we are just fooling our own selves. How to see without the camera is all that the camera teaches us. Realizing the common picture taking mistakes. We all make mistakes, but if we can avoid it, even better. Blurry, contrasty images, red eye images, lens flare, obstruction, big net, color contrast, tilted horizons, over underexposed. These are the kinds of mistakes and more and more and more is what we end up making as photographers. When you know how to correct it, wonderful. Go to YouTube, go to other people, go to other photographers, go to schools, figure it out how to correct it and get it done. If you cannot still do it and you keep on repeating the same mistake, make it your style. And people will start calling you, so, such an arty photographer you are. So appreciation analysis, it doesn't matter whether you're a good photographer, a bad photographer, eventually, uh, if you are accepted as an arty photographer, you can do anything that you want to do in life. But beyond the rules of composition, beyond the lighting techniques, what is more important is the purpose. Why am I shooting this picture? Is it to convey an idea? Is it to sell a product? It is, is, it, is it to document a moment? or an event, or is it to showcase a lifestyle? So what is the purpose of taking that picture? If that is not clear, then your purpose of taking that picture is not solved. The audience would not be able to understand why you have done it. And more importantly, what is the feel? What is the feel that it creates? Most important thing is purpose, and the second most important is the feel. You come here, you look at me, you listen to me, you say, what the hell is he saying? Or else you look at me, wow, is that good? So what feel it creates is very, very important. So if your pictures can speak more than you can, it makes more, more and more sense. And to do that, the most important ingredient that is required is love. If you love what you do and do what you love, it's like which you cannot define how much. 
Okay, it's like namak andaz se. We apply or we add salt to taste. No, you go to any recipe book, they never specify how much of salt to add. Similarly, how much of love you add to your work shows in your work. That is the most important thing. Most of us do not realize we do not love our work as much. We love the other things that go along with it. I come across a lot of photographers who aspire to be photographers. They are carried away more by the glamour of it, but not the love for what they really want to do. They think I get to interact and I get to meet celebrities like a Tom Cruise or a Sushmita Sen or a Shah Rukh Khan or a, or a, or a, or a Sachin Tendulkar or a Mahendra Singh Dhoni. And you know, I get to spend wonderful times across the world at someone else's expense. What they do not realize is there's a lot of hard work that goes into it. And if you do not have the love for the subject enough, you would not be able to do that. So love is a very, very important ingredient. And to conclude, what is most important is presentation. A book is judged by its cover. Similarly, a photograph is created by the way it's presented. For a photographer to create an image is like giving birth to a child and nobody wants his or her daughter or son to look ugly. That's Bejan Daruwala and his girlfriend. Okay? So love can blossom at any age. So if you, if you are interested in photography or loving something else, you can fall in love with it at any given point of time if you haven't dated. Mediums of presentation, you know more about it than I do today. Handling the business of photography. Okay? I wish I had all the time in the world to teach you how to master the art using the tools of science. Uh, so basically mastering the art using the tools of science to create commerce is what distinguishes an uh, amateur from a professional. Yourself. That is the most important and the last part of whatever you do. Defining and designing one's own style. In the words of Richard Avedon, one of the photographers I, I, I truly admire, he, he, or, or he had once said, the portraits are more about me than the people I photograph. That's Nawazuddin Siddiqui, who I had gone to shoot for a li glossy lifestyle magazine, coming out of his house, and the dudwala had come, I told him, Bhaiya, idha lagdo na And that billy, that cat, or the kitten, was waiting right there for me. And that is what made the picture. So this made into a double spread in a lifestyle glossy magazine, which people thought would not be possible. They had planned a mega shoot after this. Okay? So that is what adds to your inputs into the picture. You have to anticipate and get that. So this is a big thank you to Geetam for getting Ritam.